Good. Aren't you a little cold? <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't stay out there long. Oh, okay, <laughs> I went back and... How are you, though? How are you? I should think. It is, it's bad. Yeah, how are you? Winter. I mean, I'm not as bad as... Winter. She's good. Time of year. No, no, no. no, no, no. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. I hear it all the time. I yeah. back in and got my coat. <laughs> I think it's the warmest, nicest day of the week, they were saying. Oh. Channel 4 last night. Yeah? Yeah, I think we're getting rain coming midweek. Yeah. Halloween might be better. Okay, we're live. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, this is the Washington Area Highway Transportation Committee meeting. It is Monday, October 29th, 2018. Um, let's have a call to order and a, and a roll call. Give us a roll call here this morning. Mark Wessels. Ed Fisher. Here. Judy Wagner. Here. Ray Frankenberg. Here. Bob Ingeman. Here. Bill Stratman. Here. Mayor Sandy Lucy. Here. Joel Holtmeyer. Here. Danny Cassette. L.B. Echelkamp. Here. <clears throat> Bill Miller. Here. Tim Brinker. Steve Sullentrump. Here. John Nilges. Here. Thank you. We stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God and indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Again, good morning. We got a quorum here. We got one, all of us all here. First thing is the approval of the minutes from September 24th. Any additions, corrections, additions, changes? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So move. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Sandy. I have a motion and second. All in favor of the minutes as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. First item on the agenda, Amtrak. Where's Mark? Do you know no, but he may know something yeah. about the Yes, I can just give you a quick update on the quiet zone that we've been working towards. Um, the paperwork was submitted to all the entities to establish that quiet zone um, last week. Uh, so it's about a four to six week process to get the uh, locomotives uh, like I said, there's some 6,000 locomotives, I believe, that have to be updated. Their systems uh, updated to um, uh, digitally get that quiet zone uh, put into place here at Washington. We did some upgrades. There's some new signage you'll see, no train horn signs on the, on the uh, fencing. And then there's actually an upgraded um, latching mechanism on the fence. Previously, in order, if you were on a train to access the depot, you would have to reach over the fence to open the latch to get in because it's a one-way. It was a one-way latch. We we installed a push button now on the inside of the track. So if you are, you know, caught on the inside of the tracks or you're getting off a train, there's a push button there that will latch or will unlatch the gate to allow you to to, to get off the tracks onto the depot. So those are the two things um, that uh, were improved. Pretty minor. I would expect no later than the end of the year to ensure that we have the quiet zone uh, back in place. Um, now, that does not mean locomotives will not whistle. They're, they whistle for a, a, a variety of reasons, safety reasons, that there's no way that I could you know, stop that, essentially. People too close to the track, stuff like that. But this is not going to be an automatic whistling situation anymore. So. Good. Very good. Thank, Thank you, John. John. Thank you, John. Yes. Thanks for your efforts. Missouri River Bridge, Highway 47. Well, we are on track for opening the first week of December. Uh, we're currently working on the ceremony for December 1st at 3 o'clock on the bridge. So um, hoping to um, one night the week after the ceremony, December 1st through that week, uh, we're hoping to have it open to traffic. We do have a contractor that has um, agreed to keep the asphalt plant open. So depending on the weather, uh, what night of the week it would be open um, will de be dependent upon the weather. So yeah. we'll wait and see, but it should open that week one night overnight. Are you still having trouble with people on the new bridge? Yeah, we talked about that again last week. There was a few people still kind of coming out trying to see. So um, Albarisi is going to post some uh, no trespassing, dangerous kind of signs on this north, uh, south side. Um, especially now that that pavement's all poured, it looks very inviting for people to try to get out there. So we're going to add some signing and some, like, not police tape, but the caution tape across there every evening when we leave the job site. So taking some additional precautions there just to try to keep people off of that. There's been a little criticism heard that uh, 
on the south side, that curve? Yes. A couple more houses should have been <laughs> removed. Yes, we've heard that comment since day one, actually, because, um, and I know Ray's father was very uh, involved in that. Um, and I mean, if you look at it, there's still 20 feet, um, you know, of unused pavement. We got the 10 foot shared use path along with a 10 foot shoulder through there. So there's really no danger in the, the actual barrier wall comes all the way down to that point. So there's really no danger for any occupant of that home. I did meet with the property owners, uh, it's been a couple weeks ago, to discuss you know, their options there. Um, and they seem content now with you know, the design and potentially changing the use of their uh, property in the future to something else that may be um, enhanced by the bridge. So uh, we'll see what comes of that. But again, it is a 30 mile an hour speed zone, so it's designed accordingly for the speed limit. So I think if people just hold off a little bit and let us, you know, get it open to traffic and then they start driving it, they'll understand that it's not as significant as what um, it appears to be today. It's, it's as much of a curve as Herman's? You know what, I don't know what design miles uh, their curve is up there. Okay. Just ask. Sorry. I I'm used sorry. to know that when I was answering the hundred of questions, but <laughs> I don't remember now. Okay. Um, so but I can find out. Okay. Again, in another month, it'll be open and people can kind of get the feel of they're coming into a town, they're going to have to slow down. Uh, we put the advisory speed flashers on the bridge. Um, that was something that later Herman uh, needed to add because people were coming from a very rural agricultural community into a town. Uh, so they needed a little bit more alert to say, hey, slow down. So we added those into the project, you know, from the beginning to make sure that people do go 30 miles an hour as they're approaching that curve coming into town. So, so hopefully all those work, <clears throat> but again, we're not going anywhere. So if it doesn't work or if there's some kind of problems or still concerns, uh, there's, you know, always time to act later too. J Judy, Her Herman is 25 miles per hour. Thanks. Is what I was Google, Google Earth that. tells I didn't me. Want to say so. that. <laughs> theirs is a 25. Mile. I thought theirs was worse than ours. So, um, okay. thank you, John. Is the governor coming for the open? Uh, we have not got confirmation yet. I so think everybody's we waiting until after the election. <laughs> we don't, you know. I mean, for the speaker. I wasn't going to say that. Well, no, it has to be. Yeah, everybody is be. waiting until after next Tuesday. Um, to commit. To commit. So. Um, so the uh, we, so the ceremony's at three on the bridge. Uh, we're working on getting that planned. Uh, we've invited the governor and our senators and uh, state people, our congressman Blaine Lukemeyer. I mean, we've invited everybody to speak. Um, yes. You all are kind of handling that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have chairs and bleachers. Heaters. Heaters. Yeah. Um, we'll be able to walk the bridge. We'll be able to walk the bridge, yes. The YMCA will be hosting a walk run in the morning. In the morning, so they're going to go all the way across and back. Um, entrance from the south side. There'll be some memorabilia on display. It's still kind of a work in progress. <laughs> and, then, um, and then when that's over, the uh, event will move to the Riverfront Park. And then we will have refreshments down there, and um, kind of a little uh, kind of a party down there, really celebrating the bridge. So we'll be having shuttle buses to get people to the bridge. Uh, if you park at the riverfront, there'll be shuttle buses to take you to the bridge, and then the shuttle bus will take you back. So it's kind of all really starting to unfold. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, anyway. But everybody will need to park at the riverfront or park south of the bridge because there will be no access at all from the north end unless you have a special permit. So and The bridge will open to traffic the next day? No. Well, now sometime they're saying that sometime that week. So, you know, we don't think our – the original plan – how far do I want to say the – I mean, we had hoped that the lighting would be ready. Uh, <laughs> and so we were going to go to the riverfront and throw the switch. But – I don't think we're going to have, we're not going to have lighting. I don't think we'll have lighting. We won't have lighting. So, you know, um, opening a bridge is all about getting the traffic on it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> we will have other ceremonies later on. You know, I think there's going to be ongoing ceremonies, but it's, <laughs> we're going to get traffic on it sometime in the 
first part of December. We'll Correct. See, right? Yes, because as you see right now, all the concrete lanes are being poured to make the connection, but we got to tie back into existing 47 at both the north and south end. And that work is done with asphalt. So that work will be done at night, depending on the weather, the week after the ceremony. So, because we do have to close down lanes to, just to lay the mix, let it cool, and then we can put traffic over on it one lane at a time. So that'll be an intricate operation for one of those evenings after the ceremony. And we'll, we'll base it all on temperatures most likely. Kevin had a question, yeah, comment. He has a comment, hopefully he doesn't have a question. <laughs> do, well, it's a question, I guess, but uh, I did get a, con a question from Tim this week, Judy, that uh, we come off the bridge with a 10 foot dual use, shared use path. We come up to the first street and the, the sidewalk, and you're going to get some questions because the sidewalk next down. We are 10. working on that, Kevin. Okay. I was going to say, otherwise, working yeah. with the city to get that revised bike. That's still bike off plan. the record, please. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. We'll, we'll, we can chat with you after this, but we're still working on what we're working out. So we'll work through those details and let you know how it comes out. <laughs> Thank you. You're going to advise everybody to, to park at the riverfront? Mm -hmm. We're going to advise folks to park at the riverfront and then um, take the shuttle. We have. Um, School buses, four. Four school buses, one yes. handicap accessible. One handicap accessible. And it's then work I in think progress. There's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of progress being made. There's a church that's going to be uh, serving hot cocoa and cookies. Um, there'll be some a lioness, junior lions, um, with the guest book and handing out the programs. Uh, ROTC will do the flag ceremony. The brass um, band will be playing. The brass band will be playing on the bridge. Band. Mm -hmm. um, who is your? Uh, uh, we'll have a um, Barrel Bob will be there. Yeah, Barrel <laughs> Bob will be there. No, we'll have an invocation. <laughs> we'll have a closing. The blessing, singing, the uh, uh, yeah, the uh, high school. No, uh, who's doing the Stephanie and Dan oh. McKenzie are doing the Thanks. national anthem. It's it's all coming together. You know, we'll be making an official announcement soon. Yeah, yes. Anyway. Yeah but we're getting people to commit. This right. is on December 1st. All December 1st, on a Saturday afternoon, beginning at three o'clock. The shuttles will start at the riverfront at one o'clock, coming up to the bridge. Um, so nobody will be allowed on the bridge after the run walk in the morning. Then the bridge will be off limits until one o'clock. Um, and then we'll have security up there from one until about 6 p.m. So that's when the public will be invited to come on on the bridge. And if they walk from their homes or walk from you know some other location, they do have to enter from the south side. They cannot park on the north Augusta bottom or anything up on the north side. They have to come on the south side and walk up because of the lower speed limits. But on December 1st, people can walk across. Mm -hmm. yep. no, no bicycles? After one o'clock. Um, we're not doing a bike race or anything. So we really it's really a tight bridge. It's only 44 foot wide. So we're really not recommending bikes allowed on the structure. So if they bring their bikes, they'll have to park them somewhere on the south side so. bike yeah do you, you know what the propane bulk plant that's over there is going to have access right by the bridge here on the north side mm -hmm. we're not going to allow anybody to come in from the north no, i'm just saying after it's all over with and, and he oh, opens an, up an entrance yeah i think eric are you the permittee up on the north side is working with the propane company but they'll have access to 47. Mm -hmm. right there by the bridge It'll be north of the bridge, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's actually ac after the tie-in is where they're going. Yeah, it's is. north of the tie-in. Because mm. we'll tie in just south of Augusta Bottom. Mm. I thought they already got their permit for an entrance. I think the tank is Do you know? You want in there this morning. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking they already got the permit. Are you doing their engineering? Um, not me personally, but okay. somewhere in my office somebody is. Okay. So <laughs> I, I could figure out what's going on. But, I'm pretty but, sure they've already but, been approved for their permit. But the driveway the is north of all the construction. Uh, so they had to work out whatever they wanted uh, for, for that prior to. But once they build the entrance, it, it'll be in and won't change. It's awful close to that bridge. It's, of course, it's Augusta Bottom North Road of there right there. It's, it, it's actually it's north, of the, north of, the, uh, of the levee, north of the bottom yeah. road. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be like across from where the uh, Strotman's um, feed store, the not the feed store, but the uh, buildings, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever that is. The yeah, medication sure on is. December the first will will go regardless of the weather. Yes, unless it's too icy, but we'll go rain, snow, cold. 
And Highway 47 will be open through the whole thing. Correct. Yes. That's right. We will keep Highway yeah, 47 I mean, open. Highway. That's why we're discouraging weekend traffic on it. Anybody from parking on the north end and coming, they all need to park on the residential section in Washington or Mercy Lots. Um, but this, the block between Hancock, Third Street, and 47 will be closed to everybody except for uh, local homeowners in that those square blocks area there. Um, our bus routes will be running from the riverfront, Third Street, make the left on Hancock, make the right on First Street, and then we'll empty the buses at that site. We'll have the south uh, outside lane of 47 closed so they can exit the buses there and then walk. Um, the chamber and some other, two other folks I think have uh, volunteered to bring golf carts. So if someone needs a golf cart, it is a quarter mile walk out to the overlook where the ceremony will be. So there will be golf carts available for those kind of folks. Um, they are providing an ADA bus as well. So you can bring your wheelchair or as well so um, they one of the other things that I want to make sure gets out there is that they are um, going to be broadcasting this down at the riverfront so if it is extremely cold or if somebody really wants to be a part of this ceremony they can just stay at the riverfront there'll be heaters down there along with the large screen that will be um, uh, projecting it live so you just don't have to go out in the inclement weather if it is bad uh, you can stay down at the pavilion at the riverfront and watch the event and watch the rest of us out there in the freezy cold rain or whatever is going to happen. <laughs> because the riverfront's going to be a lot warmer that day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is there going to be a live feed? The, a the live yeah, feed, it'll be yes. a live feed. We will so, be a live feed. So we can view it online on the MoDOT yep. website? Mm -hmm. MoDOT St. Louis. You can Facebook. stay home in front of your fireplace and do You could stay yeah. wherever you want to stay. So Absolutely. much for a balmy day, you know, a beautiful balmy day. Of course, if day. you're going to speak like the mayor or someone like that, they will have to be out there no matter what. So. Okay, right now I've got the whole day crossed off. Are you going to need anything from this group? Or is it pretty um, much going to be city, county, and MoDOT? Yeah. We are going to have some seats reserved. So it's not really we're just going to ask you to stand because you're part of the Washington Transportation Committee. Um, your father, of course, was part of the bridge committee. We're going to reserve seats for them and ask them to stand. But you're not going to say anything or do anything. So um, that's really all we're asking. If you are going to be there to sit in the first or second row and we haven't like done the layout yet of the seats but um, if you come please sit in the appropriate area so that we can ask you to rise and get your clap for all your service on transportation here so. and it would be nice to have as big a group as we can I would presume yeah. let me know if we need three rows because <laughs> we can do that and well, it's us <laughs> Oh, yes. We're sending an official invitation to those who were on committees and boards and things like that. So this is a photograph that Bob Zick mm -hmm. took on a tour, right, on one day? Yeah, he was out there with me around. that day. Goes. And we decided to use it on the invitation. It's a really cool picture. So we can pass that. So, pass okay, that. and then I'm bad with names. Uh, Hancock is uh, on west of the bridge, west of 47? Yes. We'll okay, so the buses there. won't be crossing Ooh. 47. No. Okay. We'll have them just make that one left. And we do have flaggers associated at different locations throughout. There'll be MoDAP flaggers. Um, EMS folks, we're having meetings with them as well and where they're stationing. Um, not that we have to worry about it, but we do need to worry about security um, as well leading up to the opening. So we'll have people out there on the bridge, you know, monitoring. Uh, the trail right now will most likely be closed, so we will ask everybody to go on the traffic uh, the main two lanes, the 44 width part, um, and then we will allow um, a staircase over the barrier wall so that you can go out on the overlook um, before or after the ceremony. But there'll be the majority of that trail, unless a miracle happens, uh, will most likely still be closed that day. So, will it be open that night? No. <laughs> and the trail the in the contract, Bill, that's a good question. Um, in, the tr in our contract, the only thing we required them to open was the traveling lanes. So we never put in there that they had, because we knew it was going to be very difficult by the end of 2018 to have all the lighting, all the trail connections and everything open based on our workday study. And Kevin's over there going, yeah, that was a lot to push. Um, but so when we did our contract job special provision, we did just require the contractor to have it open to traffic and allow us to have a ceremony. 
Um, so they are meeting that requirement. Anything additional or above that was, was going to be an added plus, but um, we will allow um, to go the next step when we demolish the old bridge in February-ish timeframe, March, somewhere in there. Um, Albarisi has agreed to allow the city to host two um, raffles, one of which will be go to the highest bidder that will be able to push the button to ignite the one span of the bridge. And the other bridge will be a raffle. So you buy chances and then the one lucky random winner will be able to uh, push the button for the, the second blast or vice versa, we haven't decided. And we're working with the city to host a big um, viewing area just east of the bridge in that big, what is that native planting area? <clears throat> it's kind of a big area on the riverfront trail. <clears throat> Yep. So we'll allow oh, the that to be the native grasses native area grasses. there um, to allow the viewing area from there. Uh, so that'll probably be the only place that the public, um, Albarisi right now we are working on an intensive plan to keep the public out of the, off and out of the way. Um, and of course we will have to close the existing traffic to 47 when that blast is going off. Uh, there will be two main implosions, which are the two main channel spans. Um, the 500 foot section on a 500 foot section just to the north. Uh, the section from Washington out to Bent 9 over the railroad track is the old deck truss. If you remember the I-35 Minneapolis bridge collapse, that was the section um, that had the similar substructure or su superstructure. Sure. So that they will be packing and removing the concrete, the driving surface off of, and then they'll come in and lift those deck truss members off and then implosion, implosion, and then it'll go up towards the north. Um, but they're, I'm sorry, but they're actually gonna start at the north end coming this way. But basically that's kind of how the um, dismantling of that structure will happen. So there'll be an opportunity for two more ceremonies. <coughs> um, and then if we still want to host a lighting ceremony one evening, uh, we can still do that as well next spring, so. When, when do you it's a work in progress. <laughs> um, right now they're hoping it to start maybe in January, the main blast, I'm guessing February to March timeframe, but yeah. there's a lot of demo work that'll have to take place. So they'll start it almost immediately. Immediately. Yes. Taking it down. Cause yeah. they have to be done and out of here by July. So they don't have much time to mess around. Um, and the core, you know, with they're trying to get that bridge down and in the river during non peak out uh, days and months for barge traffic recreational. Um, so that they have time. They've got 48 hours to get 24? 24, 24 yeah, hours. They're they, working on trying to get. Trying to get. <laughs> there you go. Um, they are, um, they're trying to do it during the non-peak river um, operational okay. period. Sure. So by doing it in February, March timeframe, they can get in there and then not really impede the river traffic. And that's one of the biggest risks of when we do that blast is trying to keep people out of the way. And they're very, um, very concerned with that. So we are gonna be keeping our EMS team that we formed for the ribbon cutting ceremony together for the rest of the project. Uh, they've been very helpful so far in the issues that we've been having. But this one um, involves Marthasville, ambulance, um, the whole entire community on both sides of the river that will be needed to help us when we do do the blast. So. That group of folks that we've been formed already, we've had two or three meetings and we'll continue to meet, um, will be very vital to the success and the safety of that blast. Judy, who are the two uh, raffles benefit for? Do you know? Uh, the mayor gets to decide that. So we will, um, and I just found this out last Wednesday, Mayor. Sorry, you look surprised. <laughs> no, it's fine. I was going to call you Friday to have something happen with my birthday and everything. Uh, that I got out of the office early and I left a whole list of stuff that didn't get done. Sorry. That'll be good. So. Um, we'll decide. So, yes. <laughs> Is that a good answer? <laughs> So if you have a charity in mind, I would assume that the mayor would be the one too. This is all a work in progress. You know, yes, you just never know. <laughs> we will have an event though. So the big thing right now, and, and we're trying to work on it, is um, getting the, the ribbon cutting ceremony. And at the ribbon cutting ceremony, Bridget wanted to be able to try to start selling the raffle tickets while people were energized. And this was at the last meeting that you had missed, Mayor, um, Thursday. 
and then um, try to do that. And then, of course, our highway commission is coming in town Monday. that Tuesday following the ceremony. So they'll be in town. What is it? The fourth, fourth and fifth. the fifth. They're meeting and then the here commission. on the fifth. It will be here Wednesday. So getting those children that had the wheelbarrow pennies. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to still be planned over the next month. Um, so we're trying to make everything just really as enjoyable as possible. And then we'll worry about the blast and the other stuff after. How, how old are these kids now? Mayor knows. <laughs> what did you say there? Well, you know, two of them were uh, uh, Joseph and Jason Lousy, Ray Jean's boy. They were in that photo. And they're... 18? Sophomore. They're sophomores. Driving. And Caitlin... Jeff Patkey's Caitlin mm -hmm. she's was, a she's, she's a freshman. freshman. She was one of the little ones. I mean, they're, they're all grown up. <laughs> it's taken uh, us a while. We understand. <laughs> it is a major bridge, right, Kevin? <laughs> I think I was in high school when we started. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about it for another 100 years. <laughs> I don't think any of us will have to worry about it. Um, but I think it will be a really neat thing to do something to thank the commission, whether it's a banner with their handprints or an empty wheelbarrow. I don't know. Whatever, whoever came up with that wonderful idea, whatever she comes up with, um, the commission will be very uh, grateful to, to be appreciated. So since they are all volunteers, well, <laughs> and there will be a um, mayor. I think you're inviting back one of the commissioners that was here. Yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne Mickey. Okay. Yeah, because he was here uh, the first time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping the Lieutenant Governor, Mike Kehoe, who was a commissioner as well, will also be able to attend. If he attends, he will definitely be given opportunity to speak. So if anybody has any personal connections. Actually, I have all those past, um, like I have Stephen Miller. I have all them on the invitation list because they were all here once. They know we've been working on that, so they could come And whether back. they make the ceremony or whether they make the commission Just to let them meeting. Know. Sure. Um, when is, when is that ceremony or meeting or whatever? The commission meeting will be here on that Wednesday. December the 5th. Okay. And the time has not been announced yet because they normally have the closed meeting, public meeting, and all that doesn't get worked out till like the week or two before. So, but that is December 5th. So there will be uh, some type of gathering the evening before. <laughs> the mayor's plan, plan, planning. <laughs> No, we've got that going. So okay. it'll be a Jesuit hall. So just working out the details. Judy, mid Christmas, a, we're doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> because you've got a lot of different uh, parties involved. In is there going to be a command, like a command person who is the the person to go to if there is a problem with something? It's like a for the ribbon team. cutting ceremony. Yeah. Yeah, we will have a command. A um, Oh my gosh, my ICS training. The EOC and all that, I mean. Yeah, but command. incident commander, I'm sorry. Yeah. There will be an incident commander. How could I forget that's that? It. That's it, that's what it's Yes, we will have an incident commander um, and we are still working on that. I think we got a meeting again next week over at the police station um, because we're looking at both sides of the river. Yeah. Just in case something does happen. I mean, uh, this weekend with the synagogue bump, you know, master, you just don't know. Well, that's why so I we want to make sure we're thinking through everything. And chief is just awesome with um, wanting to take the most secure frame of mind when we're planning this. I mean, we've never really had to do that when we do ribbon cutting ceremonies, but really it's been um, like just the way we park a car, the police cars and um, to try to protect the public. So. Um, we hope that nothing major. Well, how about the highway patrol? Highway the highway patrol, patrol the coast guard. The um, I say Warren the County command sheriff. staff, That's but the, the, um, the sheriff has been at every meeting. The sheriff from the north side has been at the meetings. Um, ambulance, fire, the um, coast guard, the highway patrol. Everybody could possibly think of with the and the airport, the FAA. I was like, there's somebody else. Um, they're all going to be involved in the planning of this. <coughs> security plan okay. so uh, Mercy Hospital's also been on the task force for that as well so since there's a helipad and some other things there so we are trying to think of everything um, that is definitely a separate com committee that's working on the cookies and hot cocoa so um, there's been a couple different groups the mayors <laughs> but I greatly appreciate the community volunteering for all of these 
separate things, but um, we're bringing it all together. It's um, really going to be nice. Of, like, <laughs> so. Are you going to have some of the boaters involved, like the boat club? And uh, you know, they have a yeah, program at Memorial Day where they pass and review with the American flag. It's very impressive. Yes, I know that is. Uh, well, we hadn't really thought about boaters too much. Because we didn't know how. We didn't know about the cold weather. About the potential. We thought about fireworks and other stuff. But boaters <laughs> don't care about the weather. <laughs> No. They could go under, I guess. Oh, well, maybe they could do something on the river. Somebody you know, the day that. ends quicker, too. This yeah. is at 3. It gets and dark by 5. five. five. You know, it's That's the problem is our time frames are getting. So they were looking at potentially a firework or a lantern or other things that would be more reminiscent of the lighting instead of the lights going on. It's really going to be nice. So we're going to have uh, brat, brats oh, yeah. and hot dogs and chips and beer and wine and going to be a party at the riverfront. And, and all stuff will If only the volunteers show up, you're going to have a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the proceeds will go to charity. So I think everything's going to be a dollar. Yeah, everything's going to be a dollar because we didn't. Because they didn't want waste. We didn't want people to waste. So everything's a dollar. So it's. Yeah, it's coming along. It's, it's really night. coming together. So. Yes. It's a lot more organized than what we sound. It's just. It's a, it is. It yeah. is really organized. We have agendas and now in a minute. And, yeah. Um, but if you do think of something else that you think we may have forgotten, please mention it to myself or the mayor so we can. I'll think about the boating. We could do that as they're waiting for the shuttles or something maybe. And when people get on the bridge, um, the EMS will have all their fire trucks, ambulance, that kind of stuff, the ladder truck with the flag. But they'll also be handing out stickers for the kids to climb. They could climb in those trucks or vehicles um, and work with any youth that come out and let them see the they'll be placed on the bridge to areas where um, children can still have something to do while they're waiting for three o'clock to come. And there will be heaters on the bridge, Johnny on the spots on the bridge, um, some cookies and hot cocoa and bottled water on the bridge, the brass band. So it should be a nice time. Any other question, comments? It's here folks. <laughs> it's here, wow. it's here. Wow. Car. Yeah, we talked about it for so long. Yeah. It's finally here. When was I wanted to get Bob an answer? When was the first time we brought it up at this meeting? Do you know? Well, when when the highway commissioners were here, um, the first time, because I think it was when Dwayne Mickey was here. Well, I don't know. The first time, yes, we were working on Highway 100, That's and right. Bob approached them at that That's right. meeting okay. when they were here. And that would have been in 2008 or 9. Because 08 uh, when the collapse was up in Minneapolis. So it was right after that. So Bob approached them at the meeting. That's right. Because we went from the commission meeting to the opening of 100. Mm -hmm. Or the ribbing, or groundbreaking. And we thought at the time it might take 10 years. So if that was 2008, <laughs> it's... We're still within 18. We're... Barely. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to make it, Mayor. We are. <clears throat> hearing, hearing no other comments or questions, I'll move on to the next item. You guys ready? Highway 47 Corridor Committee. Uh, I have no report. We've no, not. Uh, hasn't met since. Uh, we've not met since the last meeting. Well, I think the consultant is finishing up the study. There you go. Okay. So they That's were wrapping the that up, and then I think by January we're supposed to have a study in our hands, right? <clears throat> I. I don't recall, to be honest. I but. think that's what Ron had sent out a while back, so. Okay, no other comments? Uh, Franklin County Transportation Committee. I have no report. We've not met since the last meeting either. Hopefully the tax issue will pass and we'll be able okay. to uh, have some uh, good discussions about uh, uses of the transportation, future transportation revenues. MoDOT, Warren County, Eric. Nothing new. Okay. <clears throat> Got a handle on it. Airport. On um, the airport, I think uh, our last meeting was also prior to this last meeting. Uh, and, and I know John updated you at the last meeting on the uh, tarmac construction. Uh, but we, uh, the hangars are still full. And we have 14 on the waiting list. Uh, we have been discussing uh, we're going to review the rents. And we're going to uh, um, keep on our topics of discussion the possibility of more hangars. Uh, 
other than that, the repaving is ongoing. We have a few um, small frustrating issues that we're working through. Uh, we do anticipate final completion is going to be spring because we have to get the grass growing around the edges of it. But we hope to have other issues worked out. And John, you want to add <coughs> anything to that? No, we, we, we've had a, uh, the last final issue was a temporary striping removal had some um, problems with getting the striping removed correctly. So we're working through that with the contractor. Um, in addition, we are also looking into um, the uh, striping, uh, restriping the air, the actual airfield itself. Um, hopefully, going into next spring, um, with bidding at this winter time. And I've not briefed you too much on that, Ray. But uh, that, if you recall, that was bid as an alternate to this project, um, and it was split out just because of uh, the bids for that alternate weren't very tight. So we made a decision to not do so, you know, to move forward with striping of the the runway itself. So that's going to be bid as a separate project. Um, hopefully, this winter. Uh, coming right out of the gates next spring uh, to uh, upgrade the striping. I think it's been 10, 12 years, I think, since it's been done. So it's about met its lifespan. Um, I don't think there's any issues with doing so. So we're going to move forward with that into next year. And and we are not uh, at a point for violations or anything no, like no. that. Um, they have noticed on the inspections that uh, we need to be considering it. So uh, we're, we're, we're timely on this. But what you have is as that pavement ages, uh, the reflectivity goes down for, for, for night, and uh, it, it isn't as visible during rain and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's, uh, it's a runway. You know, you don't have two-way traffic on it that you're worried about, so we're I, in good shape. I had a question uh, actually twice now in the last month probably about, has your touchdowns or um, flight numbers increased since St. Clair closed? I keep sending them to the airport to ask them because I don't know the numbers, but and I was we, curious. We don't really have counters in there, so oh, uh, okay. uh, we can tell you that the number of uh, instrument approaches to the airport are up, and a lot of our traffic depends on the schools as well, and I think we were getting all that. We do have a few people who are now uh, coming to the airport that used to go to St. Clair, so the, answer, the, uh, the short answer is yes, they're up, okay. uh, but how much and why, we, we don't have a real good handle on because uh, you know, you just don't have a lot of good counters on it. It's not like we can put uh, a hose across the, hose the runway and, and, and count them. So we have been, uh, that, that topic is on our list at every meeting. Uh, we're considering using the security system that the city is now installing around the city as a means of a counter. Um, so it, it'll have a visual camera effect to, to it, but that's going to take somebody to look at it and count them down. So whether we want to put that effort in or not, we don't know. That kind of leads me right into the next thing is that that, that plays into our airport layout plan. Uh, right now we're still frustrated that we don't have that completed. MoDOT's kind of dragging their feet on it a little bit. Uh, but also there's no loss to us for not having it completed yet. Uh, once it is final, uh, it's, it's, it's brand new. But until we have somebody that wants to do something to increase traffic by a lot here, um, we, we, we don't have a need for that larger airport layout. So. Uh, we're still pushing MoDOT on it. We do expect it to, uh, kind of by the end of this year, the beginning of next year. So if we don't have it in December or January, we're going to be pressing our consultants to press MoDOT harder. And it's not like we're getting any negative feedback. We're just not getting feedback, right? Yeah, the, the last round of comments from MoDOT uh, to CMT was about a month ago. They did respond back to those comments. I, I also had a conversation with MoDOT about when we would expect that ALP. Are you dealing directly with Brian? Or uh, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Yep, I had a phone call with them uh, two weeks ago, I believe, uh, to try to nail down what is the schedule. You know, people are asking me. I need to be able to report some accurate. Um, he indicated that by the first of the year, they feel like it'll be in place. So all the comment period, the back and forth, that goes, I think, from <clears throat> internal mode out. It jumps around from Jeff City to Kansas City at the FAA. It, it, it moves around a lot. Does that have to go to the public before it's approved or not? I, I no, do, I believe I do not the public believe. comment period yeah, quite some okay. time ago, yep. and that does not expire. Um, so, there is light. I mean, it, it, we're about finished with Was it. Was there any mention of a connection to the KD Trail in that plan? No, because the airport layout plan won't be impacted by it. In other words, we won't have to get that permission. <clears throat> it is on the city-owned property, which is dedicated for airport, and we can argue that all kinds of ways, and we will let the FAA know, but, but we won't be that close to the airport. We're, we're, we're actually, if, if it moves forward, and that's the last item on, on my list was to get an update on that, but uh, uh, when it does move forward, we're going to be on the same path that the farm tractors are on now. So, okay. so there won't be any more risk to aircraft or, or people because of it. 
and that's that's my opinion on that i just didn't know if you needed to get that approved if that was one of the alternatives you were looking at i'd hate to have to put an addendum to this plan that's taken so long to get approved uh, i i mean the the alp that's currently or the airport layout plan that's currently at modot is is, is really around the tarmac um you know it's really focused in on the hangar location it does not necessarily expand not the entire the property. entire i mean th there is some discussion but there really isn't much improvements as far as that well the navigation know. easements are all part yeah, of it that's right okay so that's, that's the, uh, the clear the zones around the runway uh they're all part of it and we're staying outside of those easements with any plan at this point in time what i've heard about it we're staying outside of those easements with any plan in fact it lays on a county road until we get past those navigation easements and that's when it crosses the projection of the runway if we stay where, where we think you're at, where I, where I think you're at. Uh, at this I don't time, know where you're at. I just want to make sure that we don't have to go through this plan approval again if we do go. Right. And if somebody p calls me on the phone and says, Ray, I heard you're doing a trail across the airport property. What's Ugh. the status of it? I said, no, nah, we ain't got nothing going on yet. <laughs> okay. Because we don't. Um, you, you know, once we're moving forward with something, but, but right now, yeah, we are talking about um, how to get from the bridge to a Katy Trail access. Mm -hmm. And we've at the airport said, as long as we don't impact the airport, we're, we're excited to say yes to whatever you have. So you, you basically use the county road and then the maintenance road to go around. <clears throat> it's a yes. farm, yeah, it's a farm access road. So it's not airport. Road. Yep, so the navigation easements, which tell you how far you have to protect the ground for roll off on the ends and oh, landings okay. on the side of the runway, we're well outside of those. And then there's navigation easement that rises from the ground up into the air on each end and we're well below all of those. Okay. So as a surveyor, I would tell you, you're not encroaching on anything that has restrictions. Good. Okay, that being that, uh, I'm available for anybody that wants to know what's going on at the airport. Uh, I, we're not actively seeking out organizations at this time for me to go talk to, but I'm happy to talk to anybody's organization. So if they wanna know or talk about it, if you wanna just go out to the airport, uh, anybody who works there will, sit there and talk to you about aircraft airports and give you a little tour of what's going on. The fuel and hangar summaries are attached to the report, so I'm not gonna go into them in detail. Uh, if, you take, if you do look at the uh, fuel sales, you'll see that uh, the, the av gas is lower than it was four or five years ago when it, it carried us. And uh, now the jet fuel is, is kind of picking that back up. So we are having an up year uh, even with the uh, construction we have going on out there, uh, but we don't really have a way of measuring the impacts of the construction. A anybody that comes into land knows that there is construction going on at the airport. Uh, and as I said, we are getting more uh, of the commercial, not commercial, but the uh, uh, business jet traffic in and out of there based on fuel sales. That's all I got. Very good. Thank you, Ray. Any other comments, questions at the airport? Uh, let me go back to the, uh, uh, I was going to ask Eric about the grant application for the causeway uh, idea. I've not heard anything yet. Nothing's come back yet on that build grant? Nothing? Okay. You know, but I've heard some awards. I know like SIU over at Carbondale area got a build grant, so I don't know if. I haven't seen anything. I haven't either, but then I just saw they were celebrating that, and I was like, yeah. But I didn't see the announcements I at all. I thought it was good, supposed to be sometime in November, but. Did anybody else see that about the build grant not. being awarded over there? I Maybe I dreamt it. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> because some politician was coming in town to lobby for another politician for, but announced that they get, they're getting the grant too, so. But I haven't seen any official. Okay. Okay. Team track. No Team report. Track. John, anything? Nothing. No report. Uh, East West Parkway? No report there either. No new construction or any plans or any? No. Public transportation? We got that letter attached to the minutes. Did you see that? I did not. Yeah, she's retiring. Kelly now. Anders. Kelly Anders is retiring. She accepted another position. I did not get that. I keep losing these folks over there. Yeah. Um, Brenda other, Wright will, White will be our contact. Is she added to our invitation? Or? Brenda. Brenda White. Brenda White. 
Okay, any other business? I will note that uh, the collections on the uh, half cent transportation tax have reached, exceeded $25 million. Now, that that's amazing. amazing. Wow. $25 million that's has been collected. Wow. Well, that's what, 2005? That's something to celebrate. Yeah. yeah. Right. We can celebrate that at the bridge dedication. <laughs> I mean, we think about it, that that's the four lane highway, basically. That is right that's there. The, that's the uh, well, your share of the our share lane. of the four lane highway. That's correct. So well, you could go four lanes. When does that end? Paying off. Go west. Twenty five years. Exactly. Is it it was Twenty five years. So it ends in thirty. Two thousand thirty. Right. You know, I wonder if that's worthy of announcing in the paper because a lot of folks worked on that campaign. I remember mm -hmm. that. December, January with Jim Briggs and just going through all the ballot language and all that. You guys had a bunch of volunteers out there. Yep. And I don't know if that's worthy of a thank you to somebody because 25 million, I mean, that's a, a huge number. That's, that's a, a big That's number. a huge number that would have never been able to. And people don't know what you all did back then. You know what I mean? To get that highway out there. Mm -hmm. I think the issue passed by. I don't know, just a thought. Several that hundred votes. Pretty big. When you think about it, yes, good. That, that was the margin of difference. It's 20, I think it was 200 and some votes, as I recall. Um, yeah. And that, that created the seed money then for the 500000 to keep the bridge mm -hmm. process moving along. It's just pretty cool that it's $25 million almost even. Yeah, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. That makes it look kind of cool. We had one story on that. Oh, did we? Did you? I didn't see that one. Who was the who was the chairman of that? I was. You were? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, good job, Bill. Good job. You're right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of money that didn't go in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. No, it does. <laughs> Monthly. Yeah. It's a result of it. Business. We Business. need to do something similar to get Highway 47 done. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, we do. I mean, it's, that's why this build grant. Uh, you know, the big study was done. Uh, MTIA, Major Transportation Investment Analysis, which was done in, what was it, 80 something, 89 or something like that, did the study and said, well, we, we have to sit back and wait because we don't know where the new bridge is going to go. Right. Well, then the bridge, the whole process then of, first of all, fixing the bridge because it was becoming impassable <laughs> because it was falling mm -hmm. down, and that whole process of getting that funded and then getting that done. And then the <coughs> realization that the new bridge was going to have to happen at some point, or we had to start. Um, so that that's been ten years, as we know, just from when we knew we knew needed something. Mm -hmm. So, but that report laid out there, and it went into Morin County, and nothing really has changed as far as the terrain or roads or much in Warren County where that bridge would hopefully go, you know, that, that, that bypass or causeway or whatever. The river's still going to flood the same as it did before. People don't realize that. We got this new bridge, but the bridge is still going to flood where it always flooded mm -hmm. right at Augusta Bottom Road entrance. Um, and now's the time to, this build grant hopefully would, would tie into that end of the road and at least get us some, some beginning monies to start the 10 year process that it's probably going to take <laughs> to get that done. That's the probably the A lot of environmental to work that. too. Yeah. And of course the highway 47 South. I mean, that's, that's a plan now. That's a plan that hopefully if the tax issue passes, there's funding for all the communities along that way to get together and start getting that job done. I mean, so we're not that far away. We got, we've got, we, we've got positive signs. Again, everything, you know, this tax issue has to pass. Does anybody have any questions about the tax issue? Anybody in here that doesn't understand it or is worried about something or about it or whatever? Bill, has there been any change with the uh, school board's opinion on not, yes, not supporting it? Yes, I that myself too. I don't know that there was a problem. I think it was in the early stages of when we started talking about it. And there was, there's a lot in that bill other than, you know, the 10 cent per gallon. Um, and probably those people probably read the total bill and saw the, saw what I, I saw it. I saw some of the inconsistencies and I had a hard time talking about it and telling people about it because I didn't want to make it sound that I was against it. Uh, it has to pass. 
And my concern is that anything we could do to give it its best shot, chances, and it looks like the advertising, the promotion of it is very well done. I like what's happening. I like to see the commercials and how they're bringing it back to safety and, and uh, school buses and ambulances and whatever. That's where, that's, those are positive uh, uh, things to tell people about where these monies are going to go. And it all is going to go towards MoDOT's improvements roads of bridges. roads, roads and bridges. Um, the little things that are in it are, are actually kind of meaningless at all. You know, the Highway Patrol has always been funded by MoDOT monies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not so, something new. In fact, it's interesting that the, the amount that $288 million is 70% of whatever would be collected in a year is the, basically the budget of the Highway Patrol <laughs> annually. So that's just a, just happens to be that number. Uh, so do water patrols uh, funding also come out of MoDOT or the Highway Patrol? Highway Patrol, yeah. Yes. Highway Patrol and Highway water Patrol. Patrol isn't I think their annual budget right now is 244 million. Okay. And yeah. that's what we're giving them out of our sales tax of vehicles and fuel tax. Right. So basically when this is formed, then we no longer have to give them a portion of that fuel tax. Yeah. That money goes for roads and bridges. Correct. Yes. And then the money that's going to go to the to the cities and the counties is also going to be used for roads and bridges. Yes. It's just that it's more localized where the input is going to happen. From, and I think the big portion of, of it is going to be used to leverage more federal funds. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's the really the, that's, the big plus. that's the really yeah. the big message we need to get out. The fact that it creates a freight bottleneck fund um, that's just a name. There's no money There's put no money into in that. Mm -mm. And then the gold medalists or the Olympic medalists not paying taxes on their medals, which is really confusing a lot of folks. Um, I think there's only been in the history of Missouri three Olympians that have won that. So mm -hmm. it's not like it's a big um, benefit to these Olympians don't have to pay taxes. I mean, it's maybe one person a hundred years, I guess. But um, and that's really what's confusing a lot of folks is. It's just a shell game with the MoDOT money and the Missouri High Patrol money, but the other two things <coughs> kind of throw it out there as, as being. But if you explained, it's the only way our politics work at the 11th hour of the session well, to can, get initiative. I can on tell the you ballot. about the freight bottleneck hub because they're bottle, bottle which we need fund, that in Missouri <laughs> is that is needed. Obviously, the big projects aren't going to get done without a special pool of money that's set aside specifically for these big projects. Um, the bridge coming over the Mississippi, uh, the railroad bridge, mm -hmm. uh, Merchants, Merchants, bridge. Merchants Bridge, I always forget who that is. The Roachport Bridge, they talk about the Roachport Bridge is going to have to be replaced or something done to it. How many hundreds of millions of dollars? But they need to set aside monies so that that thing, if they say if you have to close that thing down one lane at a time, half a lane, it would back cars all the way to probably to Warrington and whatever. It would, be, it would be a major bottleneck, literally, for everything, freight and their whatever. Uh, and so the, that, those monies could, have, could be set aside, and it could be as much as 40 to $50 million, actually, a year that could go into this freight bottleneck fund. And it's also only going to be used on projects from a 2014 freight study. Mm -hmm. that was done showing the biggest needs to keep freight moving through Missouri uh, and some of those the projects are some of those projects aren't uh, very complicated either some are just adding a additional truck lane on like 44 through the Ozark Mountains just to keep the trucks off and not allow that congestion to build down on a few ramps and interchanges it's ex adding an acceleration lane for trucks to get going so it doesn't cause that congestion all the time so some of them are not really expensive projects. Some of them are just local little bitty issues that we see that, bottle, that cause bottlenecks and delay freight movement. So I mean, there's you know hundreds and hundreds of projects out there that still going to be spent could on fall highways, in that category. Still going to be spent on transportation. Yes. Either way, it's just a different. It's a way to set some aside for the big projects that have to be done. Um, any other business? Anybody? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, second. Second. Okay. Myself. All those favor and aye. We will adjourn. Aye. 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 Thank you. Good Thank deal. you. Aye. Very good. Thank you. John, you guys got it. Young blue. Young blue. Are you going to be in the office later?
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I gotta be with you. I want to call you out. Deeper. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, that's I true too. You know. Maybe yourself. You're right. Yeah. Maybe that's not advice.